Hi, welcome back to ArtFusion. Today I'm going to show you how we enlarge an image using the grid method. Now the grid method is very simple to do, uh, just a little bit more time consuming than using say a projector. So I'll take you through and show you how we're going to enlarge the zebra and you can use it for any image you like, it's just the same process. So we'll get started and we'll get our image and we'll go from there. Now I've got my image of the zebra and what we're going to do, we've got to divide this up into a grid. I'm going to just divide this off in two centimetre areas and we'll do this right along this way and right up that way. Now you'll see that I have marked off every two centimetres this way and this way now I've started from the actual picture, not where the image has come onto my paper because on the canvas this is going to be the bottom of my canvas and this is going to be the side of my canvas so we start from this point and work each way once we've marked all those spaces off, two centimetres all the way around, right across the top and so forth we're going to just draw our grid in by just joining those dots up and once I've got the grid drawn and that's just a matter of joining through from one mark to the other and just draw a nice and firm, I'm using a pen that way it stands out easily for me especially when I'm doing this zebra with all of these stripes we want it to stand out through the stripes so I'll go and put this grid on then I'll show you where we go from there okay now we have all the lines drawn on our grid I've evened them out as I've said in two centimetre squares or three quarters of an inch you can make them smaller or bigger whatever you feel is going to work for your artwork then I've numbered them one across to fourteen an alphabet A down to J so that gives us our reference points on the graph as we're working so once we've worked that out got our grid done, we're ready to start putting it onto the canvas itself and enlarging this. So I'll take it to the canvas and we'll show you how to do that. Now we have our canvas, I've put my finished white coat on, just the same as what we would do if we were using projector. So this is my finished coat. We're going to put a pencil line graph over this, so I want to stress to you, when you draw your lines, very, very faint as light as you can do them and still see them because you have to remove some of them later and I'll tell you how to do that but as I said with the graph this is what we've done now I want the image to start in this corner down here just like I've told you here that's where the image started so we're going to start here and we've got to work out how far across we have to go now if I want the nose of the zebra to finish about here well then I'll put a little mark there and that's where we'll work our graph to so then we've got to divide that up into the same number of squares as here we've got 14 squares so I'll measure from there to here and to make it easier it's the um, 1 meter 100 or 43 inches so that's where I'll put my mark then I use my calculator and I'll divide this length up by 14. So then it'll give me how big each square is going to be. So using my calculator, I'll do 1 meter 100 or 1100 millimeters divided by 14 equals 78.5. Well, I'll do it 78. Half a millimeter is not going to make a lot of difference. So I'll do 78 millimetre squares. Now a simple way of marking it out so you haven't got to measure each one all the way at that. Just get yourself a piece of timber or anything you've got. And I've just marked out 78 millimetres, 78 millimetres, 78 millimetres and 78 millimetres. So I'll do four at a time. So we've just got to then mark them on that canvas. And you can see how much easier that is. I've just done four. And then we just start again. Say if you're just measuring each one out all the time. And we go right along to the end. 
And then we do the same up this way, exactly the same, and the same up this end, working from the bottom up all the time. And then when we're going across the top here again, we'll just work from this side all the time. You don't work from the opposite end or else you'll have lines running on an angle. So everything's got to be square, everything starts from this corner. So then I'll mark all the way along here and then I'll draw the lines. Now when we've got all of our marks on working each way, <clears throat> you're always going to have a little bit left over on the, that end and a little bit left over at the top, not the full 78 millimetres. That's okay. We're not going to be drawing in that area through there. That's the leftover areas around here. So as long as everything is even spaced in the centre here where your image is going to go, everything will be okay. Once we've got those marks there, then get yourself a straight edge. I'm just using a piece of timber, so it's long enough to go right across. Then you just start drawing your lines in. As I said, I'm drawing these heavy. I want you to do it very lightly, because the heavier you do it, the harder they're going to be to move later. So nice and lightly, and I'm doing them nice and heavy so you can see them with the camera. And all we do is obviously put all your lines on, joining up your marks until we've got the grid. Okay, now here you can see we now have a grid the same as what we've got on our paper here. Now because we've started our image here, which is the mark I had on here, you're always going to have an extra square and maybe an extra square left over at the top because you've brought the image down into this smaller part of your canvas. So, don't worry about that. The way you get it in its right position is when you mark your numbers, start from this corner with everything. So, I've started counting 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, so on, back to 1, and that's the last square. Same with this way. J starts down here, up to A, just like I've put on this side over here. So, if everything works the right way there, that's where your image will be right in here, just like on this uh, image we've got here. So we've just transposed that grid onto the canvas in a larger format, and that's going to give us our larger image. So once we've done that, we start drawing it onto the canvas, and then I'll show you how we do that. Now this is where the fun bit begins. It's also quite time consuming, so it does take quite a while, so be very patient when you're doing this. Um, there's no quick or easy way. So, especially with the zebra, we've got a lot of stripes, so there's a lot of detail to put on here. So, that's why I say if you can get a projector, it's really quick and easy. But you can still do it by doing it this way, you just take your time. Now, to put this image onto the canvas, all we have to do is our first line is going to be here. So, we just count up to, we've got in the E square here, and in the 14 square, that's where we're starting off. So I'm on my E square here, and I'm about a third of the way up going by the drawing. So I'll put my little mark a third of the way up, and we run through on a reasonably straight line. So all we're doing is running a line through there. Then we go to the next square, and the line runs through and just raises a little bit. So come through and just raise up that little bit, not much at all. Then we go to the next line and we can see we're running up to about halfway. So you just come through up to about halfway. And then just keep looking and checking you're in the right spot. I'm still on number 12. There is that last one. So we're going to 11. And 11's coming up that little bit more. So we just come up a little bit more on the 11. Then we look at 10 and we see that 10 comes through and at about this point here we start to curve up and we cut through just here so just about there so we're going to come through here and we're going to turn that up to there like that then we go to our next squares and double check again we're on 10 for that one there and then in 10 through across up into D we're going up nearly to halfway so we come up there like like so and we just keep working all the way around 
curves up a bit and we have a little bit of a rise like so for the ear and then we continue through to about this level on the square. Then the next one comes through and down. So once we get to that point there, we're coming down and curving it around until we get to about here. So we've got to come down to about this point here. Through. And this is where a little bit of drawing skill comes in. You've got to start looking at that and saying, right, that comes to about there. Then we've just got to come down a little bit. We're going to finish about here. So we run through to there. And this one just curls around up there. And then once we reach that point, we're here. We're going across over to this square here. About there. Round and come down to here. And then we finish off with a curve like so. Now there's the outline of the zebra. You always do the outline of the image first, and then any detail obviously gets filled in from there. So I'll start filling in some of the detail. I'm not going to show you the whole thing because I'll be here for hours. So I'll show you where we start and how we just go through and get all those lines on. And as I said, the zebra is a fairly time consuming image to create. So I'm up to the G here. This first one I'm going to run through. Now these stripes don't have to be perfect because no two zebras are the same. And you'll see when I'm painting the zebra, I tell you the same thing. As long as you've got them fairly close to what it looks like on here, they'll come out fine. On the face, on the face you have to be a little bit more detailed, but on these main stripes it really doesn't matter. So I've got my first one on, back up to G again here. The next one's going to run through, come through down to the, this line here, and then we just come in and out again, back down to this point here. Follow this line all the way down and cut across there. And run it up through here and around and back in to there. And just keep going down. As I say, the stripes are fairly confusing, so you've just got to really watch what you're doing. And the more you do this, the more you'll get used to it, and you'll start to realise that, yeah, it's not that hard, it's just time consuming. Sometimes it's a good idea to mark your black areas, because you're going to paint over them anyhow. So this one's black, so I'll put a cross in it. This one's black, I'll put a cross in it. It just helps you remember where you're going because it can get confusing. So here we are now after a lot of time and a lot of careful lines going on we have your zebra with all the lines on. Now what I've also done is where the black is I've put little squiggly lines just so I know what part is black. So when you've got it to that stage that's when you can start painting. Now when you're going to paint, I would always start on your thick lines first, just like I showed you on the video. And I'll show you what to do with those lines that are on there that uh, you don't need there when you're finished. Now, to remove all your pencil marks, this is a very important stage. Once you've got all the black on the zebra and you're finished with all the black, get a soft pencil rubber and just rub out all of the lines on the white areas and also all of the lines in here on the zebra body. So anywhere there's a line, it's got to come off. Now once you've rubbed it off, if it's not gone completely, you still see it faintly, using the white paint you used for your background, you're going to have to go over and just paint over those areas, give it a nice gentle coat right across, 
and also in all these white areas here. Wherever there's a pencil mark, they've got to disappear. So there's a bit more work than using a projector because projector you don't have those there in the first place. So you've just got to go over and get all of those off. Then you've got to let that white paint dry completely. So you have to leave it and come back. Once it's dry completely, then you can do your shading just like I show you on the video. So that's how you get all those pencil marks off. And as I said, it's a little bit more work involved, but you get a great result at the end. Well, I hope that's helped you with the grid method. Uh, as you can see, you can enlarge any image. It doesn't matter what shape it is. You can enlarge it using the grid method, just like I showed you. You don't have to have drawing experience. You just have to take your time. And be very careful and follow that grid and make sure you're filling in in the right areas and the right squares. Step back and have a look at it as you're going and you'll get to see whether you are going in the right direction. So I've shown you two different ways of enlarging an image onto a canvas, the grid method and the projector. So if you need to know any more information on the grid method, on the internet you'll find all different tutorials showing you how to do the grid method as well. But I hope this one that I've just shown you really helps you and you can create your own zebra like these. So until next time, Happy painting.